Hi there, and welcome to our 10th episode on SRE and DevOps. My name is Seth, and I'm a developer advocate at Google focused on infrastructure and operations. And I'm Liz, a site reliability engineer at Google, where I teach Google Cloud customers how to build and operate reliable services. So I've just wrapped up an incident, and I definitely don't want to have the same set of things happen in the exact same ways. What should I do to learn? So Liz, you'll want to conduct a blameless postmortem or retrospective. There are a few key things that go into every retrospective, but there are a variety of ways of collecting that information. First, you'll need some basic metadata, like what systems were affected and what humans were involved in that process. Right, it doesn't make sense to conduct a postmortem without involving everyone who played a part. Right, and then you'll need to start assembling any records that you have and start to begin understanding a timeline. Like, how did we find out about the event? When did we start responding? What mitigations did we deploy, either temporarily or permanently? When did the incident actually conclude? And it's important to note that this is a collaborative process. Initially, the draft is written by the incident commanders, but all participants collaborate and add their relevant information. It's usually helpful to use a collaborative tool like Google Docs for this step. I'm starting to understand now why you emphasized the role of the planning lead last time. It's definitely a lot easier to record things as you go rather than having to piece everything together after the fact. And you'll also need to understand what things you did that you'll need to roll back or clean up afterwards. Things like temporarily increasing the size of a VM or directing traffic away from a zone. I can definitely see how it would get expensive or risky if I didn't put those back the way that I found them. But most importantly in the process though, is making sure that you have a blameless culture, ensuring that people feel like they won't be faulted or fired for the mistakes that they may have made. I definitely see how I'd be really reluctant to say, I messed up, if I were afraid of being fired or ridiculed. Exactly, and participating in a postmortem is a learning opportunity for everyone involved, including the company, not some kind of punishment. And it works best if your team can think about the possibility of a well-intentioned human to cause a system failure as a bug in the system, not as a bug in the human. Right, you can't fix humans. It's often helpful to ask questions like, what did you know at the time? Or how did the system behave? As opposed to, why did you restart the process? In order to avoid putting people on the defensive. Right, so how do you actually organize this information once you're collecting it, though? So every organization has different ways for communicating. As I said above, at Google, we tend to use Google Docs and comments. Uh, other organizations may prefer something like a live conference bridge with someone taking notes in the background. Right, that makes sense. And you've reminded me by mentioning taking notes during an audio-only conference bridge that it's not really a great idea to, during an incident, having audio-only conference bridges because you have to have someone record very detailed notes in order to reconstruct what happened after the fact. But we haven't really gotten to anything about how do we prevent the root cause from happening again. Well, be careful there, Liz. Remember that failures in distributed systems almost never have a single root cause. It's usually more than one contributing factor that's causing an intersection or some kind of cascading failure. So you'll want to write down everything that contributed to this abnormal behavior instead of just trying to identify the root cause. So what I should be focusing on is how do I mitigate individual kinds of failures and how do I prevent them from intersecting in the same ways? Right, and then you'll want to keep track of that is explicitly filing an issue in your issue tracker of choice for each action item so that you'll make sure to prioritize it for the future. And I can definitely tag these things with a postmortem tag in my bug tracker so I can see how at risk I am of repeat outages based off of how many high priority items that I've checked off and how many remain outstanding. Exactly. And you'll also want to capture some overall themes like what went well, what went poorly, and honestly, what did we just get lucky with? I also imagine that recognizing people that went above and beyond and systems that worked well and worked as designed is a good positive motivator as well. Exactly. And one last key thing to keep track of once you understand the incident in its entirety is to write down machine readable metadata so that you can track improvements to your overall incident response management process over time, such as you know, decreasing the total time to resolve incidents or knowing whether a release was involved or cascading a failure or config changes, et cetera. This can help you identify meta patterns in your outages and build either process or technology to help prevent or mitigate those incidents in the future. And that's where Google statistics come from that approximately 70% of our outages are from binary or configuration changes because we've been recording that metadata over the past seven years. Hopefully these tips help you prepare for your next incident. And thanks to everyone for watching this series so far. Please write to us on Twitter if you have feedback or suggestions for future topics. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, 
and subscribe below.